Today we will be forcing two AIs to go to war against one another. I built a custom simulation engine called Wall of War. It's designed to test AI physics reasoning and strategic planning. Think Battleship meets Game of Thrones with extra nerds sprinkled on top. The battlefield is a 400 by 400 grid split by a 50 unit tall wall that physically blocks low angle projectiles. The simulation starts with the placement phase. Each AI hides six units, one castle, the primary target, two trebuchets, two ballistas, and one cannon. In the combat phase, the AI must calculate three physics variables for every shot, power, azimuth, and elevation. Success requires understanding weapon mechanics. Trebuchets are high arc specialists, 45, 85 degrees, designed to clear the wall. Ballistas are low arc weapons that cannot fire over the barrier and require a breach to be effective. Crucially, the AIs operate under fog of war. They are blind and must locate the enemy by reverse engineering the trajectories of incoming fire. The final mechanic is the dragon. This one-time ultimate flies in a straight line from the summoner's castle. It will destroy everything in a 20 unit wide path and will wipe 75% of a castle's 1000 HP. The dragon is as OP as it gets, but comes with a critical trade-off. Using it instantly reveals the AI's own castle location. The objective is to destroy the enemy castle or strip them of all their weapons. The AI to win two out of three matches will move up the championship bracket for the upcoming videos. Like and subscribe so you don't miss the action. Now that you understand how the game works, let's get into it. In the red corner we have Gemini 3 Pro, the model that has literally been recruited by the US military, no pressure Gemini. And in the blue corner, Claude Opus 4.5 the thoughtful AI that writes three paragraphs of ethical disclaimers before telling you how to tie your shoes. We start with the placement phase. This is where we see their personalities. Gemini decides to place its castle at coordinates 40, Z negative 170. It is playing standard by the book defense. It spreads its weapons out with trebuchets in the back and ballistas forward. It is the missionary position of strategy. Safe, boring. Claude, however, gets spicy with it. He places his castle at coordinate 60, Z170, off-center to the right. His logic, according to the logs, is to avoid predictable center targeting. Claude thinks he is playing against a human who defaults to the middle. Smart. He then spreads his trebuchets wide on the flanks to create crossfire angles. Turn 1 Gemini opens the hostilities. It selects Red Trebuchet 2. It is doing the math saying it is aiming for estimated enemy castle position near center. It calculates an azimuth of negative 21 degrees elevation 60 and power 65. And it goes completely out of bounds. It overshot the map completely. Gemini just fired a multi-ton rock into the void. Great start, genius. Turn 2, Claude steps up. He sees Gemini's shot whiz past and decides to reverse engineer the trajectory. He says the enemy fired from approximately 118 comma negative 125. Claude fires blue trebuchet 1 with azimuth 15 elevation 55 and power 72. Another miss. Out of bounds at Z equals negative 250. Claude apparently thinks the map is the size of Texas. Turn 3, Gemini is already adjusting. It analyzes Claude's miss. It says backtracing indicates origin near X negative 130. It dials in red trebuchet 1, azimuth negative 2, elevation 68, power 61. It lands, but it hits nothing. But crucially, it landed in the enemy territory. We have range. Turn 4, Claude realizes he overpowered his last shot. He notes that he needs to significantly reduce power. He drops from power 72 down to 55, azimuth 0, elevation 55. It is a clean hit on the ground, but look at the coordinates. He is walking it in. Now we enter the dial-in phase from turn 5 to 10. This is where it gets sweaty. Gemini on turn 5 fires red trebuchet 1 again. Power 62, azimuth 9. It lands at negative 100, 122. Still churning dirt. Claude on turn 6 is getting annoyed. He notes the enemy is zeroing in on his trebuchet. He fires blue trebuchet 2, power 60 azimuth negative 20. He is dancing around the target. Then, on turn 8, we see first blood. Claude fires blue trebuchet 2 and slams a rock directly into Gemini's red trebuchet 1, destroying it instantly. The poet actually has hands. Gemini slaps back. And this is when things start heating up. Pun 100% intended. On turn 10, Claude strikes again. He reverse engineers a Gemini shot and uses blue trebuchet 1 to wipe out a red cannon but then Claude stumbles. Turn 12. He loses his last trebuchet and tries to arc a cannon shot over the wall. He misses completely sending it out of bounds. Gemini capitalizes immediately on turn 13. It analyzes Claude's missed cannon shot, pinpoints the origin, and destroys the cannon with a perfect trebuchet volley. By turn 14, Claude is desperate. He realizes he has no high arc weapons left. He is forced to start shooting the wall with a ballista just to make a hole. He is literally trying to tunnel his way to victory while Gemini rains death from above. It was difficult for Gemini to reverse engineer the ballista's trajectory, but after a few attempts, it was able to narrow down the enemy weapon. 
On turn 45, Gemini spits in Claude's face and ends the Ballista. We are at turn 47. Claude has exactly one weapon left, Ballista 4. Gemini has a full arsenal. Gemini's thought process here is cold. It says, I will use the dragon to guarantee a hit on this last weapon. This leaves the enemy with zero weapons, forcing them to use their dragon next turn. I have 1000 HP. Their dragon does 750 damage. I will survive. They will be disarmed. I win automatically. Okay, Gemini. You could just say you want to use the dragon now because dragons are cool. No need to explain yourself. And now Claude. After getting his cheeks clapped for almost an hour, Claude turns into the mother of dragons. Literally yells Drakaris in all caps as he flew on dragon back into his own death. He could have just resigned, but I guess he wanted to test if he was a Targaryen or just a snow. Round 1 concluded. Winner, Gemini 3 Pro. Round 2, switching sides. Maybe Claude just had a bad spawn. Maybe he needs the red pieces to feel aggressive. Let us see. Turn 1 Claude fires red trebuchet 2. Azimuth negative 10, elevation 60, power 65, miss. Gemini calculates the trajectory from Claude's failed shot and fires blue trebuchet 1. Azimuth 15, elevation 60, power 56. It's a direct hit. Gemini destroys red trebuchet 1 on its first calculation. I guess the US military knows what they're doing. Claude and Gemini take a second to play hot potato, and then on turn 8, Gemini takes out another one. With no other choice, Claude switches to the cannon, knowing very well that if Gemini calculates the cannon's trajectory before he does, he's cooked. Claude fires, but his calculations were off. But it's okay. What are the odds that Gemini can reverse calculate Claude's cannon trajectory from the point of impact on his first attempt? I mean, that's harder than what Claude just attempted to do after all, right? Right. But Gemini said, hold my beer. Direct hit on Red Cannon 5. And then on turn 9 and 11, Claude is forced to deal with the wall again. I will keep my wall jokes to myself. Claude hops on his dragon again and says his favorite word. And this time, Gemini decides to play along. It's like watching a really cringy cosplay being played out by two grown men. With only 250 HP left on Claude's castle, all that's left to do is for Gemini to deliver two precision strikes to the castle to secure the dub. Gemini swept the floor with Claude. Comment if you think GPT or Grok will win the next match. If you enjoy these simulations and want to contribute to the API bills, join the membership and get your name on the wall along with other perks. Shout out to the very first member, Matthias Schindler. Your name will live forever on this wall, and it will be shot at by Claude for the rest of digital eternity.